This is our July Q&A. These questions came from our Patreon subscribers. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for subbing. Yeah. Ian Good <laughs> asks, did you ever play with Jay Retard or see him live in concert? Ooh. I saw him live. What was, uh, what was your what, um, what show was it, Preston? I saw him at the uh, Hollywood Alley in Tempe, Arizona, on not too long after Blood Visions came Ooh. out, and it was so furious. They were it was the yeah the three piece. They were so tight. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> Blew my mind just that one just that one time, yeah. Blood, 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 prime blood visions era. What was yours, Ben? Um, I was working at Zia, and uh, one of my coworkers, Wes, was in a band called Big Vinny and the Cattle Thieves, and he was playing a show with Lost Sounds at yeah. the clubhouse. Um, it was when it was like a narrow, long room, and uh, there were. Very few folks in attendance, but uh, Lost Sounds were incredible. And uh, yeah, Jay Retard is in that band. Um, I think there was a cello player. I, it's all kind of blurry. Yeah, yeah. they're a, cello, they're they're a cello, fellow cello, cello band. band. Yeah, well, I know there's a cello player in the band. I just wasn't sure. I heard a story too, like, yeah, because um, Wes was a huge fan of Jay Retard. And um, he'd explained that the cello player... Uh, at one performance, somebody threw a like a beer can on the stage, and some beer got on the cello, and the cello player's just like, "I'm done, <laughs> not doing this anymore. Like, yeah. this is fine, but like, I'm not gonna, you know, ruin my cello playing rock." I think clubs. I read, <laughs> I think I read that he was in like the the Memphis Philharmonic or something. So like, he was like legit dude that was just in a band, and I think he was probably kind of like caught off guard by what the world was maybe that wouldn't surprise me absolutely yeah. and that's a yeah. world i mean that's a world unto itself you know <clears throat> i've seen i've seen a couple academics get scared off by rock and roll <laughs> and i've also seen members of jay retard's various bands stop being in those bands <laughs> yeah yeah i saw i saw the two dudes that in that three piece uh in jay retard's three piece uh when they were backing up waves yeah, I think they're, they're still they're still waving, maybe. Dang, yeah, those guys are. Uh, they love those. They love those charismatic um, rock and roll wild men. Hunter Squires asks, seeing as you have toured with so many different bands, are there any lessons you've learned by looking at how other bands structure themselves? Fuck yeah, that's the best part of going on tour with bands is seeing how other bands do it. For sure. Um. I like Joyce Manor. I like the way that they operate. It's like the uh, as little overhead as possible. Yeah, yeah they keep it very like, simple. Yeah, keep it keep it, t- keep it tight for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other instances. Uh, you know, um, there's a lot to learn from the various Jeff Rosenstock bands. Um, throughout time well just basically you know bond the music industry and uh death rose and stock a lot to learn in that like there are really cool things and also like wow that seems like maybe a, a harder way to do it you know <laughs> but learn how it can be done uh is awesome yeah so it's another instance who else do you guys have any other ideas i'm trying to think of I mean, Kepi Gooley is pretty good. Keeps it very, you know, just um, nonstop tour machine, you know, just to see how that can be done. Um, oftentimes, just like a regular vehicle, even. Not necessarily like a big uh, van or anything, but also brings like the balloons and, you know, some stuff to create like a, a fun performance. Yeah. Yeah. Kepi had a lot of great advice um, as far as uh, just the, the flow of decision making when you're on tour. Like um, a couple of the platitudes that I remember were go where the love is, mm-hmm. um, pick the low hanging fruit. Like if you, uh, you know, if you, if you're getting hungry and uh, there's a restaurant that you kind of like, 
like the next, you know, the next exit down, just, just stop there and eat. Like, mm-hmm. don't, you don't need to chase the dragon too hard uh, when you're on tour because, you know, pick the low hanging fruit. I like those pieces of advice. Mm-hmm. Rat Boy asks any tips on learning how to play any instruments if you know nothing about it? Uh, pick. Pick a, pick some pick some songs, pick a song you love, and figure it out. <laughs> and I know that I know that doesn't, but 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 like you know, but in figuring it out, this is gonna be like you know maybe you can figure it out just by listening. Maybe you need to like learn a couple chords, but you know like picking something that ex- picking something that excites you, and just going for it. You know, I don't know. I when I when I was learning instruments, I just learned how to play Black Sabbath's Paranoid album and never really learned anything else. <laughs> it, it, it did did all right for me. I'm sure it'll yeah. do all right. Not that you got to play Black Sabbath, but you know, but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, finding already... something you're excited about, I think, is a very important uh, component of that. You know, whereas oftentimes when people start playing music, they you know, get lessons and they're, you know, taught some kind of, um, you know, here's the maple leaf rag or something to start with. And like, (laughs) you know, that's just not gonna, if that's not what excites you, then you're not going to be excited about playing that instrument. And you're going to associate the instrument with like something you don't care about. And it's just gonna, yeah. Uh, I, I attempted to, I've been playing for a while, but I attempted to study music at college and it just turned into so much work um because like it would be like we'd have to learn this like jazz bass solo which was a great solo slam stewart <clears throat> cool old bass player but like i had to learn the solo which i had a hard time with my ear in the first place then we had to transcribe it which i didn't really understand like you know how to write notes and stuff like that so it just like the whole thing became like this source of anxiety and took all the fun out of music for me. And that was a, yeah, that was a great learning experience to like, if you want to pursue music and keep it enjoyable, then like stick to things that excite you. So basically, I guess that's the long way of saying, hell yeah, Preston, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you say it took to learn, uh, Preston, when you first got your your first bass or guitar, the uh, bow, 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 bow. Oh yeah. <laughs> figuring out figuring out the three notes of the so- of the song Black Sabbath, it probably took me you know like I got the I got the bass, and it probably took me a good twenty minutes to figure out those three notes, maybe half an hour I don't know, and then I just played those <laughs> just those three notes because that just that seemed like the coolest thing simple thing to learn. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was great. <laughs> That that, yeah. that sweet that sweet sweet tritone. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath on Black Sabbath, right? Exactly, triple threat. <laughs> tritone. Tritone. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, yeah, uh, I occasionally pick up instruments that I'm not familiar with, um, and yeah, just give yourself time. Uh, patience is like the number one thing as far as learning an instrument. <clears throat> Yeah, kind of like that, like uh, something that I didn't learn until much later in life. Like if I got it when I was a teenager, it would have made more sense. But uh, like you don't have to know how to play an instrument to get that instrument was something that was like a huge like like thing to me. Because mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, I I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to learn how to, I'm going to learn how to play piano. I'm going to learn how to play a keyboard. And just like got like you know some shitty seventeen key MIDI controller to like be like this is what I'm gonna learn on, and then when I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna get the thing. And then I just never did. And then once I and then I just like committed like I'm gonna buy something that is fun to play and sounds good. And then that's where like the actual progress started. Mm-hmm. So that's something too. Yeah, getting something that, um, not getting the super cheap version of a thing, you know, like, um, I'm sure a lot of people have been discouraged by, like, getting a super cheap, shitty guitar and a shitty amp. Like, I'm not saying you should get the best right off the gate, but, like, don't, 
completely get the cheapest thing because it's not fun to play um, yeah. poorly made instruments. It's not as fun to play poorly made instruments. Um, and yeah, once again, like you don't have to buy the most expensive, but just getting something like, you know, just like a something that's fun mid-grade. to play. Yeah, mid grade. Yeah, it's a good place to start. Yeah. You'd yeah. be discouraged yeah. otherwise. Some of those amps just like sound, you know, like even if you know the riff from, uh, you know, like the deep the purple, most recent, <laughs> or, yeah, water. or you know, some kind of chord riff, you know, like you can learn it. It's in the Guitar Player magazine. You know, like it's there. And you're like, these are the right notes. But if you're playing it through your amp that doesn't even have like overdrive, it's just going to be like, well, this is dumb. Like, what's the point? I'm playing it right. It doesn't sound right. So, you know. That's why you got to get the PV Rage that has the overdrive button. Absolutely. <laughs> and then it'll sound <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Or a Line 6 Spider with uh, the insane setting. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Insane mode is good. Is yeah. insane spelled uh, the typical English way? or? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, another, another thought was uh, just like along the lines of like, you know, doing doing it in a way that like keeps it fun for you is like keeping it accessible like if you can have if you have this space where you can just like have something sitting out so you can just like mess with it whenever you want versus like having to put it away and get it out every time like just removing every barrier to actually playing will make mm-hmm. you play more which will make you better yeah yeah, I noticed that uh, I played my guitar a lot more when it was not in its case. You know, like, if I, like yeah, if I, like if the space for my guitar is like in its case, then you know I will absolutely play it far less. <clears throat> Another thing that uh, a t- that a teacher told told me start, starting out that's easy to forget is like allow yourself to play the worst noise you've ever heard. And like, just like (laughs) allow yourself to be bad, you know, like you want to play like whoever, but like, just allow yourself the freedom to make bad music, you know, to like make bad music and not to, and not to beat yourself up. And like, you know, if you're, you know, if you love music, then like, you know, you might be playing something and it'll discourage you, you know, it might discourage you a little bit, but just know that like that, you know, you're, you're the the reaction of like, oh, this doesn't sound good. Like that's good because that means you have taste and that means mm-hmm. that you will continue to progress. And so like allowing yourself to be a, a not good musician, uh, it kind of makes some kind of groundwork for you to grow into a great musician. Uh, assuming that you're like me or like a, any number of us that, that don't have like natural talent. Some people can just like pick up the instrument and like they're they're off to the races, but most of us like have to work, uh, and just allowing our, yourself the freedom to not be the best is a uh, is a is a is a is important for a lot of, you know for a lot of people. It was for me, I know. So, in summation, uh, to answer this person's question, what's their name? Rad, Rad boy. boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> All right. All right, Rad boy. So, uh, play the music you like. Um, allow yourself the space and time to fail at playing music. Um, pick a, pick equipment or instruments that are fun to play. Keep them out so that you will be encouraged to play them. And uh, do it a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Follow your follow your bliss. Fucking a. Yeah, the rat boy. Yeah. <laughs> go rat boy. Go rat boy. Go. <laughs> Rat boy, rat boy. CM asks, where do I find other songs like Deathlessness? It has such a particular desert western vibe that I wish I, it was a whole genre unto itself. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, I, I know how to answer that. Uh, the, the band that I had in mind, um, and the album in particular that I had in mind with Deathlessness and the sound of that and the vibe was... Uh, uh, the album Glum by the band Giant Sand, who are uh, a band from Tucson, Arizona, where where Ben and I now live. Um, yeah, uh, check out Glum by Giant Sand, and uh, uh, kind of adjacent to that would be, I guess, like Calexico, Naima Moore, um, Al Fowl. Ooh, 
deep cut. Yeah. Um, who else? What other what other desert deserty rock fuckers are there? Uh, oh, Sixa and Sun City Girls. Yeah. Devotchka is somewhat in that realm too. Uh, I don't know where they're from exactly. I know they recorded at Wave Lab. Um. Ken hmm. Smith asks. How did you first get your hands on slash get into playing a double hands bass? Hands on, hands on. Uh, okay, yeah. So started playing electric bass uh, in seventh grade, and then it was in high school. I had an opportunity. Um, one of my mom's friends, maybe somebody. My mom's a nurse. I think maybe somebody she worked with at the hospital uh, was a bass player, and actually was willing to let me borrow an upright bass. And she was going to give me bass lessons. It was a really cool setup, actually. Uh, it was very generous of her. Um, so I was in high school. Got, uh, I was borrowing that bass. She would come and give me lessons. But it was like kind of back to the earlier question about learning an instrument. It was like, you know, it was all about like holding the bow the correct way and like, you know, like playing some walking bass lines that just, you know, were very simple. Great place to start, I guess, but um, I lost interest uh, in like a couple months. So that was my first attempt at upright bass, and I was just like, you know, maybe this isn't for me. It's really difficult. Um, so I went back to playing electric bass for a few years, and then it wasn't until my my dad found the upright bass. The only uh, acoustic upright bass I've ever owned is the same one that my dad found at a yard sale <clears throat> for like $300. It's an old K from the 40s. And so he called me and said, hey, I got this upright bass, you know, would you be interested in borrowing it? I was like, yeah, you know, like I played a little bit earlier, I'll try it again. Um, and it was around the same time that I met Sean. And so like, I mean, I've been playing the bass for about a month, just trying to like play it alone at my house, learn how to play it. Um, but then it wasn't until I started like playing songs with Sean, like, I think bass in particular, you can do it, play it by yourself, but it's just not as much fun as playing in some kind of group, you know. Whether that's playing along with a record, you know, that's fun too, but just like sitting there rehearsing a bass is, uh, I don't know, I do it sometimes, but it's not as much fun as like sitting there just playing piano or guitar. So yeah, um, started playing with Sean and then that's how I learned. Uh, the, Sean, uh, the songs that Sean was writing or, you know, or, you know, several chords, maybe like five chords, like a lot of open, um, open strings and stuff, which makes it easier. So, so yeah, uh, I had good fortune to end up with a bass that I could just kind of like learn on my own time and also like found somebody that was willing to be patient while I learned how to play the thing. So, yeah, that's how I got my hands on a bass and still have that very same bass. Sounds great. Learning on the job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vinny Veitz Vite, Vite, asks, uh, Sean, what have you learned over so, the process of doing live from quarantine every day for 100 days, whether about yourself, music, etc.? Do you think you'll keep it up until live music is feasible again? Um, well, I've, uh, Vinny, thank you for the question. I, uh, the first thing that came to mind is I've learned a lot of songs. <laughs> I've learned a lot of covers, um, which is great. I love learning covers because you kind of get to learn the mechanics of what makes a song work. Um, and, uh, on top of that, I've also learned a lot about engineering, uh, like audio engineering and, and kind of workflow, making it as easy as you can on yourself so that you can, uh, you can capture a good performance and not have to worry about um, about getting getting the good sound like every single time. If you just kind of like get it set up so that uh, you can just like turn everything on with a button and start playing, uh, the closer you can get to that, the better, because then you can actually get to the real business of of recording good music performances. Um, and. Uh, Let's see. What was the? Uh, oh, as far as keeping it up, um, yeah, I think I, I think I will probably keep it up three days a week. Um, the first hundred days was a fun challenge, um, but I uh, I like 
I like having a little more time to work on other stuff outside of performing. But that said, uh, playing music for people, um, whether I can see them or not, is really good for my soul, and I love it. Uh, and so, yeah, I will definitely keep doing it. Curtis Rezik, uh, I, if I butchered your last name, I'm so sorry. Uh, you were one of the first bands to change your name because of the connotation it evokes. How does it feel to see many other bands now taking the same approach, albeit quite a long time after you did? <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seeing a Lady so, Antebellum change their name to Lady A and then sue a black woman named Lady A for the rights <laughs> to that name is pretty good. Yeah, they fixed uh, racism there for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those cunts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, uh, what other... Ex- <sighs> The, what other examples are there? I know the Lady Antebellum one. The Dixie <laughs> Chicks are now the Chicks. Hmm. <laughs> That's so tight. <laughs> um, and then Viet Cong, like, I think they, they changed their name, but they were like, we're not sure where we're going to change it to yet, so we're just not called Viet Cong anymore. <laughs> well, theirs was around the time... Th- theirs was a few years back. Uh, yeah. Uh, they changed it to Preoccupations. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and then there was uh, what this town needs guns went went our route and changed it to TTNG, mm. um, and that was also a while back. But like now, it's it's weird because like, you know, uh, Andrew Jackson Jihad became AJJ entirely from our own conversations and like reacting to. I mean, there you know there were people who had brought brought it up before that it was like kind of offensive to them, um, but like it was it was definitely like an internal thing. It wasn't like people calling for us to do anything. You know, the the big complaint I've seen from a lot of people, which I think is justifiable, is that like um, instead of enacting real change, a lot of things will just like on the surface level change, like you know we scrubbed this episode from our Hulu listing or something like that versus actual, like it. I mean, the lady antebellum thing is a perfect example of it where it's like on the surface level, it's like, ah, yeah, we, we realize our name is, is offensive from evoking the South. But then the reality of it is that they're suing a black woman who already had that name to make that surface level change. So I think symbolic change. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So like, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's, it's good, but it's also bad. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty gratifying from where I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and it's also good that society is moving to the point where it's like, you know, these people who are misguided and don't get it, it's still driving home the fact that it's not profitable to, uh, <laughs> be racist anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which is a great uh it's good that that's changed <laughs> right right it's kind of um, like how you know uh politician democratic politicians in the 90s were against gay marriage and then society shifted enough that it was a bad political move to be against gay marriage for the yeah, left doing the right thing for the wrong reasons but there's always there's always room to improve if you're in a yeah. band with a super shitty name maybe change it. <laughs> yeah and yeah, uh you know, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a good name. It can just be a really, really boring name, like the three letters of the name it used to be. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, who ke- what's in a name? Our name yeah. is boring as fuck, though, for real. <laughs> AJJ. Sucks. <laughs> just terrible. It's a, uh, yeah. What are you going to do? Our, the, the so cool many bands. Our, the cool thing, though, is our band is good. We don't have to have a, a, an interesting, exciting name to be a good band. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Making it about the, I guess that was the whole, uh, a large part of our decision was to make it about the music and not about the name, you know. Yeah, that was like, the If somebody part. just likes the name of our band, then like, you know, then that's okay uh, for them to be upset and not be a fan of our band anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not, they're not the ones that, well, you know, in, in non-COVID times, they're not the ones that have to like cross international <laughs> borders and then say the word jihad <laughs> to the yeah. to the person that's stamping the thing because no one in outside a, of in America, an airplane no one, no one outside of America knows like you know people in America know like Andrew Jackson like okay that's a you know like 
that's a, a piece of American history, but no one outside of America knows who, who the hell Andrew Jackson is. So all they, you know, yeah, go across a border and all they hear is jihad. Mm-hmm. Or see your yeah. shirts, your shirts. I, yeah, they open the box, <laughs> pull the things that say jihad. Yeah, yeah. I, I do not miss that. Yeah, no we did. I. We did let the singer of Parquet Courts down, though. He uh, he liked the name Andrew Jackson Jihad a lot. Well, he can have it if he wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> Parquet it's not, Courts not being thing. used. <laughs> uh, I am excited for Lady A to be sound checking, and uh, the local guy will just be like, "You sound like that band Lady Antebellum." <laughs> yeah. yeah you remember that band lady antebellum <laughs> kind of kind of along in the same realm uh nick lulich or lulich uh asks or says uh nick cave talked about how he feels it's important to preserve problematic lyrics to keep the original spirit of the song saying quote as flawed as they may be the souls of the songs must be protected at all costs uh, do you feel that problematic lyrics should be preserved to keep the original context, or do you think it's necessary to change them? And there's a there's a part two, but let's talk about that first. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I saw I had seen that question. I was thinking about it uh, a fair deal. Um, I think, from where I, you know, from from my perspective, I've never written I've written plenty of problematic lyrics, but I don't think I've written I don't think my problematic lyrics. Uh, come nearly as close to Nick Cave's problematic lyrics as far as like depth and what they achieve. Um, and uh, yeah, but I, I, I think when I play songs with problematic lyrics live, I sometimes do feel it necessary to change those lyrics for me to be able to sing them. Um, and I don't feel, I don't feel very bad about it. And I don't feel like I'm betraying the soul of those songs because those song those songs are, you know, forever immortalized in recordings. Like the, if you want to hear the quote unquote soul of the song, you know, and it's in its original form or whatever, uh, <laughs> just go back and listen to the record. But I don't know the the grateful dead kind of approach songwriting with a completely different attitude. And, uh, that would be that like the song is not finished once you've recorded it. Uh, so the song keeps growing and growing and changing. Um, so I think I, I guess I'm more on that, more in that boat. So yeah, I don't feel bad. I also though, I, I, you know, depending, it depends on the lyric too. Um, mm-hmm. some problematic lyrics, you can, you can say them, uh, you know, with the right intention, knowing that like, if you want to make someone uncomfortable with the lyric, like that, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing to do necessarily case by case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Case by case, for, for sure. Because yeah, a lot of uh, for certain for certain bands, yeah, yeah, keeping the song alive and changing it is is good. For other, you know, for other, I don't know. It'd be like what happened, like if, you know, if uh, those things also provide like alert, you know, in uh, in the long view, those things also like provide some kind of uh, some kind of learning opportunity. In the way that, like, I don't know, if you, like, watch an old movie, you know, and, like, see, you know, like, how the, like, and how, I don't know, if you watch, like, yeah, a movie from the 50s and see, like, all this casual, casual racism, it's very painful, but it's important to know, like, okay, like, that's, that was the mainstream view, like, you know, it was okay, you know, it was okay enough when the culture in that time to, you know, for, for John Wayne to do whatever the fuck John Wayne is doing, you know? Um, and I don't like, I don't like, I don't like that stuff, but I think it does like, you know, with history, it's, it's important to know that thing, that things are, that things are changing. Um, I don't know. That's not very, that's not very articulate, but. Yeah. I think you're talking about like the, the very American problem of like not having a memory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's, probably should be a distinction made between a recording of a song and a song itself, you know? Um, I think a song can be a dynamic, evolving thing throughout time. Um, But, you know, I wouldn't, I've never, it's never crossed my mind for us to go back and change the recordings of anything that we've done. I I personally, yeah. Um, 
yeah, I, things exist. And if people are interested in finding the context, then like, you know, that can be helpful too. But uh, yeah, a big difference between like going back and actually changing a recording, amending a recording. I think maybe that would require an explanation or something. But uh, like a song, you know, people, somebody made a song or even if they're covering a song and they want to change whatever they want, you know, like when they're performing it, then that's, that's the, uh, one of the great things about a song, you know, is that like, it will always be different um, if it's a different performance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. In our band, I think it works works really well. You know, like I'll I'll talk to you know like people who come to a lot of shows and one of the you know and they really enjoy hearing the lines that Sean sings that are different. You know, and that's like part of the you know. Oh yeah. That's, that's that's like part part of the interest. You know, if you if you're a fan of this band for a while, that's like one of the interesting. That's like an interesting thing about it is like there are these little little details that are that are that are ch that are changed around for any number mm -hmm. of you know for any, for any number of, for any number of reasons and mm -hmm. like for uh, for us that's great. Should Nick Cave change his, his lyrics? Like no, probably not. He's you know he's good, you know he's good at, good good as it is. But uh, yeah, case We're, by case, I would say. Yeah, it really it really depends on the song and like. You know, we're taking his quote out of context, so I don't know if he's saying, like, apply this blanket thing to all songs, but, like, you know, there's there's different kinds of songs. So, like, you know, something that Sean wrote that is about the way he feels and is emotional in 2011 could be updated nine years later and, you know, is totally valid to do because, you know, it's if it's the feelings uh, <laughs> and yeah. you're trying to keep those intact you might need to make changes or if but if it's like you know a super literary character thing that's supposed to be this way like super concrete like maybe you don't change it yeah but i'm definitely yeah just of the opinion of just do what feels good <laughs> yeah um, what's this uh what's the part two of this uh this question part two is uh are there any songs that you wish you didn't write or wish you could rewrite? Probably. <laughs> Will Elliott asks, what's your favorite song in a skate part? Oh, man. Uh, Jesus Christ. I saw that. I saw that question on the list and I, uh, I meant to think about it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> This is a, this is probably, you know, depends on the day you ask me, but the, the first song, the first songs that came to mind uh, for this are, are the songs Jason Dill chooses for his parts, uh, like in the DC video and an alien workshop video. Uh, there's one time he did, he skated to two different spoon songs and that was really good. And then his part at the end of uh, one of the alien workshop video um, was a Radiohead B-side called polyethylene. And that song is really good, and I had never heard it before. Even though I, I had been a radio fan, Radiohead fan, um, the first time I, I heard it was in, a, in that skate video. So yeah, Jason Dill songs. He's got good selections. Mm -hmm. uh, I love "Hallowed Be Thy Name," Jamie Thomas's part, and "Welcome to Hell." Yeah, that's a good one. <clears throat> I don't remember who did it, but I, I, th I feel like the first time I heard the Sabbath song "Megalomania" was in "Skate or Die." I don't remember whose whose part it was. Oh. Remember that making making a making a deep impression on me when I uh, when I saw it when I was a, a youngin. <laughs> awesome. Which one's the what's what's the riff to that one? Is that the one that's like da 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 da? That's not thrill at all. It's another one on the same album. Uh, the vocal line is like, I can be a something that I've been a bit of a proud and I'm tripping down the center of yeah. my mind. The girl oh, that dun, 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 slipping away, away, slipping into <laughs> sorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's in, uh, oh, yeah. shit. Well, Thrill of It All has, a uh, the, yeah, Zero Thrill of It All has, it's some stuff from uh, Sabotage. Did you say Sabotage, Preston? What album is that on? Yeah, that's on Sabotage. Yeah, yeah okay. it's on, it was on Sabotage. They, yeah. 
Yeah, they leaned uh, a lot of a lot of Black Sabbath in uh, skate videos. It, yeah, uh, it really it works well together. They work well together. Oh. <laughs> Megalomania. That's that is also in uh, Welcome to Hell. It's it's Donnie Barley's part. Oh, yeah. oh, it is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Espin asks, uh, "What is the best merch you've released?" Who? That's, That's a hard one. stuff. <laughs> I am, I gotta say, um, <clears throat> love the love the sweatpants. That's one of the main reasons uh, we keep making them, <laughs> so that I always have sweatpants, um, especially the ones that have the pockets in them. Um, it's just they're they're nice. They're I wear them. I'm a I'm a fan. <clears throat> yeah, I got actually similar similar reason just to have a stockpile of. Uh, a stockpile of cheap cheap goods that that I go through a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Skate a whole quiver of skateboards. The the size and shape that I like to ride. <laughs> That's a great yeah. thing about being in a band is like get it all of going to the store instead of going to the store to buy the thing you need, you just make 200 of them <laughs> and then you get it for free. <laughs> I just realized why uh, uh, <laughs> some people some artists have really least their own strains of weed <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah that's next you're not on your own supply <clears throat> the weed the weed box from earth was wonderful that was a good did, ride. did you get it i did nice what was it uh tell, tell me about it what did it have well it had five it had five different strains in it on a on a spectrum from uh heavy indica to to sativa <laughs> I don't remember all the names, but it was in a really attractive box. One of them was called like Pure Pain or something like that. Uh, yeah. It was, did it, it was... What kind of what kind of other flair did it come with? Did it have like a grinder or? A... It didn't have a grinder, but it just had papers. A, it, had, it had a beautiful little box. It's down. If we have a break, I maybe mean, I could go get it. It was a yeah, it's just a, a very beautifully printed box with great designs. Five five labeled pre rolled joints in it. It was beautiful. Ah. It, was be- it was beautiful. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Of the uh, I don't know. I, st- I love the 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 Bible two safe. Yeah, that's Good what one. I was gonna say. Great. Mm-hmm. Salad salad gloves. There's so many. How can you pick just one? Yeah, we are great at making merch. <clears throat> that's a good point. Truly, the, coos- the skull fuck your thirst koozies. The skull fuck Inspired. your thirst water bottles. Oh yeah, those uh, water bottles. Those are good. It's a Here's quality a water bottle. bottle. Fucking Nalgene wouldn't print "Skull Fuck Your Thirst" on on them though, like we wanted them yeah. to, because they because uh, they're like a family company or something. <laughs> we had oh, to sorry, I didn't realize. Sticker. Didn't realize <laughs> hydration was anti-family. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's been lots of good shirt designs, but I, th- oh, I think yeah. as far as like snuggly, like. Yeah, the snuggly was good. I gotta say, I was disappointed in the uh, uh, the sleep masks. Those yeah, yeah, cheap. Yeah, like, yeah. I failed very quickly. They weren't up to the they weren't up to the challenge of uh, not falling apart <laughs> immediately. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think it- I think something important with our merch is that like we always want to use it. So for mm-hmm. that thing to fucking break, we wanted we just wanted sleep masks. Yeah, absolutely. We're sleep mask connoisseur. Uh, Necro Lolicon asks, I was just wondering if you guys had any tips or advice as someone trying to pursue a career in social work and human services. Huh. I yeah, I got something. Um, pick a like find the populations that you want to work with. And also identify the populations that you would rather not work with, and uh, don't don't work with those populations. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, I mean it's uh, there's been a greater a greater awareness and emphasis these days just in general on on self care, but um, that's that's something that's very easy to forget about when you're in the thick of working in that field. But uh, yeah, take care of yourself and. Um, Try to try to have someone in your life that you can uh, that you can talk about your feelings with. 
yeah. Those are my those are my answers to that. Cool. Yeah, and uh, good luck. Thank you. What is your least favorite fruit? Star fruit. I like the shape of it and the way it looks, but I don't like the flavor. Red delicious apples. <clears throat> oh, red oh, delicious apples. Fuck them. Fuck big those up. apples. Horrible. Fuck big apple for uh, trying to, you know, pass those off as edible. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, star fruit. I, I betrayed you. Red delicious <laughs> are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> also, grapefruits fucking suck. Hey. I just. I wouldn't I, go that far. I, oh. I, I, I don't know how. I, I'm like, I don't know. How old am I? I'm 36 or something. I just, I only, I just learned how to eat a grapefruit like probably a year ago. Uh, okay. And uh, in, they're actually really good. It's never too late to learn how to eat grapefruit. Yeah. How do you eat your grapefruit, Sean? I don't. Uh, okay. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving what on. Do you, what do you do? Do you, do you cut a, do you cut it in half and pour sugar on it? Yeah. I cut That's it in half and pour sugar. With and, a spoon. And then. And then get like a special little slotted spoon so you're not eating any of the, uh, the you know the 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 bitter pithy part. Huh, they actually go spoon. one step one step further. They actually make grapefruit spoons that have little like serrated bits on the end of them. But I don't I don't even necessarily go there. I get a knife and I like go in and it's a lot of well, it's not that much work. I got time, but you go in with a knife and you cut each little segment out. You know, so it comes out really easily. You just eat the little segments. And then at the end, you squeeze the leftover into a cup, and you have some grapefruit juice. Um, so, I mean, I'm not... It's totally fine if you don't like grapefruit, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I try to be open. I'll give it a shot. I didn't know there was a wrong way to eat it. I thought, I thought I didn't, it just tasted wrong. I didn't either, and then some children laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Honey, honey's great, too. Like, yeah, yeah, it tastes bad. Huh. Of course, you're eating it like that. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know. Whoa. What about you, Mark? I'm not a fan of grapes. Wow. Oh, dang. Yeah, like I never like if I'm in the fruit, the produce section of a grocery store, I never, I will never buy a bag of grapes thinking I want this. How about cotton candy grapes? You ever try those? I did try those. They they taste like cotton candy. There we go. All right. <laughs> Are Sean's fingers basically rocks made of calluses at this point? Uh, you know, no, they're not actually. They're they're doing all right. They're like, uh, you know, they're hard. They've got calluses, but like they're not they're not real super fucked up. I, I've learned to adopt kind of a gentle touch when I'm when I'm playing hard. I uh I recoil, um, so that, that I when I because I don't follow through, I don't do as much damage to my fingers as I used to. What are you what? guys' zodiac signs? Scorpio, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces. Yeah. Uh, who would you send to the mega guillotine first? God. God, there's so many good people, <laughs> eligible candidates. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, dear lord. Yeah. How many slots does the Mega Guillotine have? Does the current model have? Technically, it's twenty. No, see, no one understands this. The Mega Guillotine <clears throat> is is a very efficient thing. So there's, it's not a it's not a first. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it, it would be the first batch of twenty. Yeah. So that's 20, a long yeah. list. <laughs> What's the person that's on the end? You know, the angle, right? Because it has an angle yeah. on it. So technically, I suppose the first neck that it connects with would be. I mean, I guess is a question like which. 20 are you sending to the mega guillotine or i don't yeah i guess uh, I, think, I could I use a little bit more uh clarification maybe we'll we'll get that one next month <laughs> I, I think mark marx was right that uh capitalism would generate the efficiency needed to move past it <laughs> um i put the yeah i'd put uh, i put jeff bezos on there um mitch mcconnell and then the cops that murdered brianna taylor those are my this is, that's my first five a good place to start. Room for fifteen Absolutely. more. But you know, as we as we learned in the French Revolution, once once you start popping, you can't stop. So you know, <laughs> we'll bring, we'll be bringing more in no, no time at all. Yeah, that's that's what inspired Pringles, actually. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't know. It's actually pronounced Pringle. 
Uh, what band has remained a constant throughout your life? Doesn't necessarily need to be your favorite, just one that has never grown old on you. Oh. Oh. They're my m most most listened to band of my life. I started listening to them when I was 12, and I've never stopped. I've listened to them probably every week since I was 12 years old. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> nice. Uh, Pixies for me. I don't oh. listen to them as much as Preston listens to Black Sabbath, but uh, but I I will always return to those to the pre the pre reunited Pixies albums uh, for guidance. It's just good. I would say, based on the fact that like it was my <clears throat> parents who who started playing them for me, I would say both Talking Heads and Willie Nelson, okay. since that's been you know things that I heard as a child that I still love um, to this day. Yeah. Or I, uh, I think I started listening to the Mountain Goats and Shushu at the same time, and they've definitely, like, and that was in high school, and they definitely are still on my radar. Uh, so, yeah, those two, I would, yeah, if I had to pick any band, not necessarily favorites, they're up there but they've definitely like lasted a long time. Yeah. There's something there's something to be to be s said for that like yeah, there are a lot of bands that like will ha like their time will be like a couple years of your you know of your life and then there's some bands that just like are enter and they just stay there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times like the bands that enter and stay like they're not necessarily like my fi you know not necessarily like my favorite um like you know at the time it's like a slow a slow growing thing it's fun yeah. yeah what are your favorite australian bands Ooh, nick cave and the bad seeds um Tame and paula hanny J, who is also in clowns but does solo a solo project that's really good um who else i like that nick band Manning the royal King. royal Headache? Uh, what were you saying, Mark? Oh, I'm a big fan of Katie Day. What did you say, Preston? You had one. <clears throat> um, what, what did I say? Uh, Dirty, Dirty Three. But, I mean, that's just like related. Yeah, that was related to the to the Bad Seeds. That was Warren Ellis's mm -hmm. Warren, it's Warren Ellis's band. Oh uh, yeah, Jim White on drums. Yeah. I saw him. I saw him play with Bonnie Prince Billy. He was sick. Oh, cool. I've got this. I've got this comp of you know like weird weirdo electro electronic punks but i can't I, I don't know i just listened to it like i don't know it's got so it's got so many things on it most of most of which i can't even recall so big big nothing there <laughs> did it have like <laughs> like lawrence english or total control like which no, uh, it was which like old, it was like it was like old old older than yeah older stuff than that total control total control was great there was a band for a couple of years out of Australia called the uh, uh, Circle Pit that I that was awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, what was I gonna say? Are Avalanches from Australia? Yeah, they're good. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, what are your favorite power violence bands? Man is the bastard. I don't yep. know if they count as power violence, but they do. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely man is the bastard. Progenitors. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, OG. <laughs> yeah, fan of Charge no remains. <laughs> Mark, uh, is is transient power violence or are they grindcore? Cuz if I would I haven't really heard them too much, but just knowing who they play shows with and stuff, I would assume they blur that line. They would probably fit into this conversation. Okay, the then the best one currently doing it is is definitely transient. They're badass. I'm a big fan of Iron Lung. They're they're the best, in my opinion. Current they're they're my favorite like current band. They've been doing it for like forever too. But yeah, uh, yeah Iron Lung's great. Uh, no comment is my favorite like classic one. They're like the uh, when I think of like you know uh, drug addict gas station employee power violence like that is the band. <laughs> <laughs> Like just like fucking miserable, <laughs> like dude at the Circle K just wants to go, and then records a seven-minute 
EP. It's fucking great. It's to the point. Favorite tour? God. Live from Quarantine Tour 2020. <laughs> Not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Damn. a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. There have been so many good ones. The the little leg that we did in January in BC, you know, uh, before before COVID, like <laughs> yeah, that was feeling dude. great. That was, that was off to a and then a, and then a, and then a, and then a total, total slam down. But there, I don't know. There have been yeah, so many, so many great tours. Yeah, honorable hard, mention hard, would be hard to pick. Honorable mention would be you know. Uh, that one last year with Antarctica Vespucci and uh, Lisa Prank and Plush was really nice. I mean, just like, uh, you know, the nature of all the folks that were on it, as well as like the route and the shows, like where we were playing, what time of year we were playing there, the drives, all that kind of stuff. I thought that was a really, really nice one. Yeah. yeah. The tours with Joy, I, I love touring with Joyce Manor, like all the tours that we've done with them. Yeah. Um, you know. Are, are, are wonderful like the yeah the one with a couple years ago with mannequin pussy and then uh you know before that with uh treasure fleet yeah <clears throat> yeah i loved uh jeff, jeff, Ro jeff rosenstock's uh smith street one that was incredible yeah, for sure chumped was also on that <clears throat> yeah. Chumped, yeah yeah that was yeah, yeah that one is like a high point in my brain because it just felt like because they were like 25 of us between all the bands or whatever and it just like it hit that level of like camaraderie where it just felt like we were just like invading a venue with all of our friends yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that, that was that was sick there's a lot to be said for a three band bill but when you have a four band bill you get like yeah there's just the party is that much bigger yeah um and and on top of that like uh all the all the crew in those bands like not just the the people on stage but like i know jeff would jeff brought out a couple different like people throughout that that trip that were really fun to hang out with like morgan morgan harrell from hard girls came in came out for a couple days and did shirts and um mm -hmm. yeah christine uh, came out for a few days yep she was good i liked uh i really love i love playing shows with shell shag um all the yeah. time and I, i've i've played uh, my my solo run with uh, with Shell Shag in the East Coast or on the in the Northeast was uh, I was just doing my taxes the other day and thinking about how how fucking fun that was um, mm -hmm. just like staying like uh, Shell Shell like did all the driving for that so it was just like <laughs> just a, a wonderful fun fucking party hanging out at their beach house in, in New Jersey it was really good um, yeah you've toured and, with uh, them five times at this point yeah. And one of which, uh, or you know, the the Kimia Dawson shows, having Kimia yeah. in the van was a was a true highlight. Oh, uh, just yeah, hanging absolutely. out, with, hanging out with her. She's the funniest fucking person in the world. Stories for days. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just a just a truly truly wonderful person. Yeah, we've been we've been super lucky because it would it would be easier at this point to talk to list the bad tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like even that, it, it like just yeah. be so short. It'd be hard because yeah, um, be you know some. <laughs> actually, Did we lose bad, bad tour completely because like there's there's good stuff you know like even on the worst, the tours that had the worst moments, were you know also tours that had like really great moments too so. <clears throat> yeah. Uh. Hey, thank you uh, very much for watching. We appreciate your questions and uh, have a good day. We'll see you later.